morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Connection Time News. I'm Martine Fravel. And I'm Nari Pierre paul Let's kick off today's program with coverage of an event that students look forward to every fall, the Pink Out. Reporter Katie McDonough was on the scene. My name is Katie McDonough, and I'm here with... Mr. Manka. How do you think the turnout of the fan section is? Oh, it's a great turnout. We have the band killing it right now. We got thousands of fans here. We got another band over here. I'm really enjoying this. We got about... 2,000 people waiting to get in right now. We're going to have one of the best crowds ever. So, do you think we raised more money this year or last year? Well, I can tell you that we sold all of our shirts. We had over $10,000 worth of uh, sales for the, um, the the Greenwich organization that we made the donation to. So, that's, that's a very formidable amount of money. And it, we should all be very proud of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. David Sergio. Baylor Bridges. Lila Bella. Nick Otis. How do you guys think this fan section turned out today? Um, I think the fan section turned out really well. I put on Facebook. They're quiet. They're quiet. No, oh, no okay, there's a lot of there's people, a lot of people here. here. There's, there's a lot of talk. people here, they but I said on Facebook to pack Boyle Stadium, and if we flip the camera, we pack Boyle Stadium. Thanks, Katie. Even though the football team lost the game, it's great to know we raised money to fight cancer. Definitely. And speaking of raising money, the pink out wasn't the only noteworthy fundraiser in the last couple of weeks. Facts, let's talk about the Haunted House. Friday, October 19th, and Saturday, October 20th, the senior class hosted the annual Stanford High School Haunted House. The event took two days to set up and open to the public on Friday, October 19th, and also ran on Saturday night. Senior class president, Lalith Goli, said the event went well. Goli said the event raised almost $9,000, which will go toward the senior class prom and after party. He added that at least 600 people attended the event, a much better turnout than last year's event. So, how was your experience in the haunted house? It's very scary. I almost died. <laughs> Horrifying. I almost fainted. I don't even know. <laughs> what was the scariest part about the haunted house? When I was pushed and got yelled in my ear, I died. <laughs> this um, like walking through this area where there was like body bags hanging off this. <laughs> that looks terrifying. They're just actors. You know half of those people, and they raised a lot of money. Whatever. Let's move on to something less scary. Halloween is over. All right, well, what do you want to see? How about some sports updates? Okay, we can do that. Let's check in with some of our fall captains to talk about fall sports. I'm here with the girls' soccer captains. Oh. Fabiana Bueno. <laughs> Caitlin Filanowski. How was your guys' season? Um, it was better than last year's season. We definitely improved from last year. Um, but there's always room for improvement, and we're always striving to keep moving forward and next year it will hopefully well it's looking good for next year and we're going definitely going to improve next year so we're starting the trend to lift our program up okay. <laughs> um, what was your goals for this year and did you guys meet your goals during the season um, our goal was to have a better record and beat Trinity and yeah we beat Trinity hi I'm here with boys soccer captains Mamadou Diallo Brian Coronado. Um, so how's your season so far? Our season's been um, it's been up and down mostly, but we still got states coming up, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, it hasn't been the best, but we're still looking forward to states. Uh, what was your season's goal, and did you guys complete it already, or are you still working for it? Um, well, we're still working for it because we have states, but yeah. Our main goal was for FCX, but uh, now we're just looking for states. I'm here with the volleyball captains. Elodie Drayson. Kim Aguilieri. 
How's your guys' season going? Okay, so it's pretty good so far. Our record is 13-7. We're in postseason right now. What are your goals for the rest of the season? Winning state. Here with the field hockey captains. Bryce Lynn Stalteri. Julia Chappelle. How was your season? Um, our season was good. We improved as a program a lot throughout the season. What was your goal throughout the season? Uh, we looked to have every player grow and to work as a team. Did you beat your city rival, Wesso? Yeah, shut out, 3-0. I'm here with our football captains. Fabrice Bartellis. Karan Langston. And how are you guys doing this season? Uh, we're doing pretty well. We just have a young team that needs to uh, focus more on doing our jobs, and that's about it. We need to be more aggressive. I think we are talented enough. We need to come together. What are your top goals for this season? Our top goal for the season is to win the remaining remainders of our games. Like we got five games left, so we're trying to win all five. Uh, our top goals are just like to win in general and just like just have fun out while winning. All right, and big thank you to Alyssa and Chris for that segment. So talking about sports is fun and all, but we figured it might be more fun to actually see some more action. So we went to a couple of reporters to check out one of the intramural basketball games, which can actually get pretty intense. Anthony Lewick has more. On Thursday, November 1st, Stanford High held their semifinal intramural basketball game hosting Team Forever Situated and Team God Squad. The hard-fought, fast-paced game ended with a 74-46 Forever Situated win, advancing them to the championship game. Here are some players we interviewed after the game and a recap of their performance. Joined here with Sam Clamps. And we're at the intramural basketball games. And uh, how are you feeling about this season? You know, we're, we're still undefeated. We spanked a lot of teams. You know, we're just trying to catch these Join dubs. The how do you feel about your performance today? I ain't gonna lie, man. I really suck, man. Feel me? I suck. I can't say nothing. And then from the other team, God Squad, how do you guys feel about this game was terrible. We weren't ready to play. I don't know. Just we didn't play 100%. That's all I can say. Um, I was pretty tired, so. Come to the championship. And here's something for all the science lovers out there. That's right, Martine. Everyone remembers the student space flight experiment started by students in Ms. Dowdy's class last year. But what you may not know is that NASA has recently supplied footage of the actual rocket launch that carried out our students' experiments into space. Check it out. Everything is go. Eight seconds. Seven, six, Wow, that was really cool to see. I can't believe that their experiments are actually on that rocket. Well, not anymore. Actually, the samples have been returned to Earth and are sitting on the ninth floor. According to senior John Bolognino, the team is in the process of analyzing the results as we speak. All right, well, that was a little too scientific for me. Let's see something less, you know. Smart. What does CEO stand for? Chief Executive Official. Officer. Officer. Hey, it was close enough. What does PMO stand for? Can you provide a context that it would be used in? When you're texting someone, you could say PMO. Reheat my oven. <laughs> um, put me on. It was close. <laughs> what does CVS stand for? Wait! Um. Services, that's the last one I know. <laughs> Services starts with a C. Is there a final? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> what does MLS stand for? Major League Soccer. Okay. What does OMW stand for? 
on my way. What does NASA stand for? Something with space. I don't know. <laughs> what does NASA stand for? Something about space. But about <laughs> That's exactly what Bucket said. <laughs> what does MLS stand for? Major League Soccer. Boom. <laughs> what does DMV stand for? Hmm. I should know this. Uh, driving. Something. Something. The V is vehicle, maybe. Yes. Department of Motor Vehicles. So oh, you kind of got there. Um, what does IRL stand for? In real life? I don't know. Perfect. That was good. Well, that was definitely a lot less smart than that rocket science thing. Yeah, but just as interesting. And while we're on the more lighthearted material, it's November. Huh? What does that have to do with anything? Well, every November, teachers and students do that funny No Shave November fundraiser. Oh, that's right. Do we have any before picks yet? We do. Let's have a look at this year's contestants. Last night when I walked in my bathroom, I stepped in a big pile of shaving cream. Wow, those are some smooth faces. Except Ringle. Yeah, well, we talked to him, and he said as long as you don't shave in November, it's fine. According to him, it doesn't say anything about shaving at the end of October. Hmm, I don't know if that's a real thing. Yeah, it's not, but you know what is a real thing? What? These two new Spanish teachers who have both switched to Stanford High after years of teaching in Bridgeport. Sounds interesting. Let's see what they have to say about it. What made you come to Stanford High? I came to Stanford High because it's a good high school and very diverse community. I like that the school has a lot of after school activities and a lot of school spirit. Where are you from? I'm from Trumbull, Connecticut. Where did you learn Spanish? I learned Spanish in high school and also outside of school in the streets and in Spain. I studied abroad in Spain and studied Spanish in college. What made you want to teach it? I want to teach Spanish for uh, to give my students the opportunity to understand their world a little bit better and enhance their lives. So what advice do you have to the new Spanish teachers? I will tell them the first thing that they have to do is to ha make a good relationship with the students here because the students here needs to be support and help in, in all the ways they need to. And when you have a good relationship with the students, everything will flow nicely and in a good way. How was your first year here? It was a little bit rough, but after I started knowing them and they started working with me, I felt like it, they did a pretty good job at the end of the year. What do you like about Stanford High so far? Well, I really like the di diversity of the students. I really like um, all the resources, all the support, all the teams that you have here. I have seen a lot of uh, school spirit. So that's what I came to the school. Okay. What made you come to Stanford High? Uh, again, like I come from Bridgeport. So I was uh, teaching in a really environment challenge there. Mm -hmm. And when I see the differences that they have, I decide like I want to work with kids that actually want to learn. And that's what I have seen here. Then. Okay. <clears throat> How different is here from your old school? Ooh, I don't know. I don't want to emphasize a lot of the differences, but... First of all, um, I have seen a lot of uh, parental uh, commitment. Like I will have parents emailing me, mm -hmm. you know, I have seen parents involved in the education of their kids. I have seen resources here, like a nice media center, computers. Uh, students have normally materials to study. My old, in my other school, they didn't, and they didn't have access to buy a single pen or pencil. So it was very challenging. Okay. And where are you from? I'm Ecuadorian. I come from South America. 
Okay, well on behalf of the round table, welcome to Stanford High Guys. Now let's sit down with some people who have been around the building for more than a couple of months. Reporter Grace Campos spoke with some of our guidance counselors to find out some of the best and worst things about their role here in the SHS community. Hi, I'm Grace and I'm with Mrs. Murray. So today we're going to ask her three questions. Which one is more stressful, first week freshmen or last quarter seniors? Uh, that's a tough one, but I think I'd have to go with last quarter seniors because first week freshmen, it's still like a honeymoon period um, and they're just they're pretty much just getting lost, so they just need help finding the classes and stuff like that. And the last quarter seniors, they're already, they're already done, and um, it's hard to keep them in school and keep them going. What's the best part of your job? Um, definitely working with the kids, the students. What's the best part of your job? Um, you know, when I think about the interpersonal relationships that you develop over the course of uh, two to three to four years, Freshmen come in, you go into their social studies class like I always did with you. You kind of build a bond of trust with them. So you come in, remember all the days I used to come in every day and bother your teacher, but I always tried to be by the door, especially the first month or two. You know, shake hands with the student just to get their name with the face and so that even if they uh, see me in the hallways or the cafeteria, you always feel free to know that, hey, that's Mr. Augustine, that's my guidance counselor. And what's the worst part of your job? Worst part? <laughs> you know what, probably for me, because I'm kind of a, I, I'm a little antsy, I need to get out of the office, I need to walk around the hallways, I need to be out in front. I'm, I, I like to think of myself as a people person. Um, sitting in front of the computer is the worst part. Uh, Ms. Ortiz? If you weren't a guidance counselor, what would you be? If I wasn't a guidance counselor, um, I think I'd want to be a full-time uh, soccer coach, maybe in a college uh, for youth teams. Uh, yeah, I think other than that, I've always wanted to be a guidance counselor, though, so that would have been my alternative. What are some things students don't know about you? Um, some things students don't know about me uh, is that I'm a big Sox fan. Uh, Red Sox play tonight, game three, and uh, let's hope we make it to the World Series and get a championship. Go Astros. That's all that we have for you today, Stanford High. Be sure to check out our site at shsroundtable.com. Among this week's stories is an interview with Barack Obama's former speechwriter, conducted by the Roundtable's very own Matt DiTolo. We hope you enjoyed the program. Our next edition of Connection Time News will air on December 6th. And don't forget to check us out on the second Thursday of every month on WGCH 1490 AM, where we air an eight-minute segment about what's going on in the halls of SHS. Connection Time News is produced by John Bolognino in conjunction with the Roundtable staff. I'm Martine Preval. And I'm Nuri Shapir Paul. Thanks for watching. You did it. Guys, and here's something. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And here's something for the. It's okay. Actually, Thanks, on that guys. rocket. Well, not anymore. Actually, the samples have been returned to Earth. To Earth. To Earth. To Earth. <laughs> Everyone remembers the student spaceflight experiment started by Dap. Mr. Augusto, uh, when